Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today we're talking about the price offer curve, what it means and how to derive it. We'll start off with a general idea of the price offer curve. The general idea of the price offer curve is we're trying to understand how changes in price of a good affect how much of that good I want to buy. So as a more concrete example, I'm going to be talking about going out for dinner. The two options for going out to dinner are Chipotle and Wendy's. We are going to change the price of one of those restaurants, namely Chipotle. We're going to try to better understand how the amount of Chipotle that I buy changes when I change the price of Chipotle. To do that, we're going to focus on some graphs. So here are the graphs we're going to be working with today. Let's start off with the large graph to the left-hand side. This is a graphical representation of a utility maximization problem. There are a lot of curves going on here. We've got two indifference curves, we've got two budgets, and we've got two preferred bundles, where the subscript one indicates before I've changed prices and subscript two is for after I've increased the price of Chipotle. So if we're just looking at this, we see this X star one, here is the initial preferred bundle of Wendy's and Chipotle. When I increase the price of Chipotle, we know we're gonna shift the budget constraint in and we draw a new indifference curve, indifference curve two here in light green, that is tangent to the second budget constraint. And when we do that, we get our new preferred bundle of X star two. We notice that in the second preferred bundle, after we've increased the price of Chipotle, we're buying less Chipotle, we're also buying less Wendy's. Now, how are we going to turn this into a price offer curve? Well, if we look right here in the upper right hand corner, I have got the price offer curve. So let's talk about how I got there. Now, I think it makes sense how I've got C1 star and C2 star. This is how much Chipotle I bought at the initial price. And this is how much Chipotle I bought at the higher price. Notice that I am buying less Chipotle after I've raised the price, which makes sense intuitively. Now, how do we get this nice smooth curve? Well, what you can think about, it's as as if I've taken this budget constraint and tried it infinitely many ways with an infinitely many number of prices for Chipotle. So I've got some budget constraints that are really flat where Chipotle is really cheap and I've got budget constraints that are really steep where Chipotle is really expensive and each time I do a new hypothetical budget constraint I think about the new preferred bundle where the indifference curve is tangent to that new budget constraint how much Chipotle I buy and I plot each of those points on this price offer curve where price is on the y-axis and the amount of Chipotle is on the x-axis. Now notice that I am only thinking about the price of Chipotle. So even though I've got this Wendy's price offer curve here, because I am not changing the price of Wendy's each time that I get a new preferred bundle, I am not putting that point on the Wendy's price offer curve because the Wendy's price offer curve only changes, it only gets a new dot if I change this budget constraint by changing the price of Wendy's and leaving the price of Chipotle the same. So here I'm changing the price of Chipotle. So Chipotle gets a price offer curve. I am not changing the price of Wendy's. So when Wendy's does not get a price offer curve. So hopefully this makes price offer curves make a little more sense. If it did, make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.